Mana mana. Mana mana. Hey, welcome to Lab Rats, episode number four. This show is sponsored by Sean's uh, addiction to Sesame Street. I love that song. It's a long-term addiction. Hey, you know what? Part of the reason why things are a little wacky around here today is because here in Toronto, it's kind of frigid. Here in our igloos, uh, for you uh, American Southerners who watch this show, you should know that it's extremely cold here. We live in igloos, and so we need head covering. <laughs> I guess, yes. So I bought you head covering. My brain is partly frozen. This is called a toque, and I just bought this from our local beer store. So this is for you. I oh, bought that for you. you. Alexander Keys. Yeah. And uh, Mr. Uh, Matt, our producer, this is for you. Thanks, buddy. Hey. hey, hey. And, uh, and I bought myself a Sleeman's. A Cyber. Cyber Walker. No, it says Alexander Keys. No, it says Alexander Keys. I want to know. It's from Nova Scotia. Why does it say India Pale Ale? That would be, uh, be a rat's. All right. I'm going to put this on. Anyway, let's get... <laughs> that's very nice. He ruined his hair. I love when he ruins his hair. Um, it was too crunchy anyways. Today we're going to uh, show you a really kind of cool trick in uh, Windows XP on how to um, work with a program called MS Config, which stands for Microsoft System Configuration. It's a hidden tool inside uh, uh, Windows XP that will allow you to... Uh, oh, hi, Biff. Where's Boo? Is Boo gone? Uh, somewhere over there. Oh, okay. we'll, hope to, we'll get him up here we'll him somewhere up before the end of the show. We've been begging for Boo lately, actually, on our blog. Anyway, mm. so MS Config. It's a great utility because you can actually edit the contents of your startup routine uh, because, let's face it, what happens when, uh, when you use a computer a long time? Well, when you use a lot of uh, programs on there, you install a lot of programs on your computer, as everyone does. You know, you get free files, whatever, things that you buy at the store. It crunches up your system. There's a ton of garbage that goes into your uh, startup. Right, right. So a lot and of programs will just sit there waiting for you to say, I want you now, and then it'll say, okay, here you go. So it's, it's just like waiting there for you to do something. So it seems like it's starting up quicker. But what it really does is it slows the rest of your system down. Right. Let's, uh, let's, let me just fire it up here. You're going to click on Start, and we're going to click on Run. And you're going to get a little, basically, an open box, right? And this is actually mm -hmm. can be used to launch any program in Windows. But this, since msconfig is hidden, we have to type a special msconfig. Um, okay. M-S-C-O-N-F-I-G. F-I-G. And, and we click OK. And what's going to happen is the utility will actually kick in. It'll, it'll wake itself up. Now, there's a lot of stuff in here. And we'll, we'll probably actually look at MS Config in, in detail in, in future shows. But I wanted to show you how to edit your startup routine because one of the great things about it is you can make Windows boot faster, right? A lot faster. And what are the other advantages? Uh, you can actually uh, find things that are not supposed to be there, for right. one thing. So if spyware is running, often it will put a little startup uh, program into your into the startup tab on this program, or on this uh, little configuration utility, right. and uh, then every time you start your computer up, there it is. And if you can't get rid of it, that's why. It's that's right. got, went there when you started up. So let's do two, two phases. First, I'm going to show you how to basically cleanse, actually, we're going to show you how to cleanse the, uh, the, the, the all the stuff in there that doesn't need to be there. So we click on, we're going to, so now MS Config is open. I'm going to click on the Start tab. That's all the way here at the end. Click on Startup. And you can see a list of things all the way down here that are actually executing. They're running when Windows starts up. Right. So it looks like here you have like almost 100 programs. Right. <laughs> so that, that's a lot of stuff just sitting there. It's crazy. You know, and this is because I've installed all kinds of freeware. I've installed a couple of you know, antivirus programs, a couple of anti-spyware programs. And basically what they're doing is they're going, Hello! And they're, they're actually running one after the other. So it takes me, what, a good 30 seconds, 40 seconds for this, uh, for Windows XP to start up on this, on this particular machine. And if you're only doing it in 30 or 40 seconds, you're lucky. Some people can have this last three, four, five minutes if they got enough stuff in there. Now, you did a, you did a test, didn't you? Didn't, didn't do some sort of lab test? Yeah, we looked at a few ways to uh, speed your system performance up. And uh, we found that one of the easiest ways to speed up your system performance was to get rid of things in your startup memory. Mm -hmm. in your startup menu because it's like eating up your memory. Now this now when you when you optimize when you actually run through the test it was something like 30% faster. Yes, yeah, 30% faster we got on some systems. It's not always going to be the case. It depends on how much stuff you have in there, how much stuff you need. Cuz there's some things in here that you won't want to get rid of and we'll right. tell you about those in a little bit. So so off the top what you should do in fact you said some things you don't want to get rid of, but I'm going to get rid of everything first because that's the way I usually do it. Um, there's a button down here it just says disable all and you're going to click on disable all. And all of a sudden, as you notice, all the way down here, all these boxes 
all the check marks got turned off. Right, so that kills everything that's going to start up on your machine except for the services. That's another tab there. We'll look at that in a bit. Right. But all these startup programs that aren't part of Windows will now not run when you start up your machine again. And so you can click OK. You can restart the system, and uh, none of them will start, and uh, you'll get a very quick boot time. In fact, that's a good way to say, OK, how fast can my machine really start up quickly? Yeah, but guess what? Some of your programs are going to be broken now. Like what? Well, as you can see on here, you've got your iTunes uh, client here, your iTunes helper. Right. You've got your Google desktop. Uh, you've got your Norton uh, antivirus. I don't have Norton well, antivirus. Well, well, if you have I Norton antivirus. Norton antivirus. OK, well, let's not get into that. But if you have Norton, it'll disable that. Did I mention I hate Norton antivirus? <laughs> All right. Any programs that need to load up on start will now be gone. Well, one of the things, you know, obviously I don't want to, I run actually F-Secure. That's my favorite antivirus program. And uh, you, I really want that to run, you know, when my machine starts up. So one thing you can do is actually go through and see if you can recognize some of the programs that you will need. So turn them on. So you have, see I hit, uh, I clicked on the box there. So that will be turned on. Uh, and you, so the idea being that you go back through and you turn on all the key items that you think you're going to need. Right. Um, and, and, and now the interesting thing about this is there are a lot of programs that you'll have no clue. I mean, what, what does this mean? G, S, A, serve. You know, there's a lot of really cryptic things in there. See, I don't know. It scrolled by so, so fast. Oh, now we hey, have a... Yeah, watch the audio. No. <laughs> hey, Biff, get out of here. All right, so... Um, <laughs> There's, there's, a ton, there's a ton of things in here that you will have no clue what they're actually doing. <laughs> and so what you might want to do before you say, no, I don't want these things running, or yes, I do want them running, right. if you don't know what they are, look them up in Google. That's a good idea. Let's, let's do this, like launch a, a Firefox here. And that's one of the one of the things you should do is because what do we do? You basically go into Google and just type in the name. Right. So if you see TP Shocks, what is that? TP Shocks. It, it has no real description there, so we have no clue what that is actually doing. Right, right. So I mean, this could be spyware if you really don't know. I mean, it could be legitimate. It could be spyware. You know, it could be a program that you've installed and forgotten about completely. Right. So just all you want to do is basically type in TP Shocks.exe. and what you'll tend to, what you'll find is that some website somewhere will actually tell you exactly what that does. It's the cat. Hey! Hey! Don't cat. There we go. Um, so, uh, good thing I got my haircut. Um, I don't have that luxury. So, so, but it's, it's, a painful, it's a painful process. You can have, basically, you've got to keep a list of all the things that are, are turned on and go through one by one. Now, you may find that one of them does not, should not be turned on, that it's spyware or it's maybe a real scheduler or something along those lines. Actually, in fact, let's speak before we go into removing stuff. Let's talk a little bit about. So, what are the, sort of the common things that shouldn't be turned on? That shouldn't be turned should on. Should not be turned on. Well, I, I would say something like real shouldn't be turned on. I mean, right. there's. I mean, if you really want real to pop up, if you use it every ten minutes, then by all means, turn that on. But if you very rarely use it, then get rid of it. Uh, QT task, which is QuickTime, I believe. Yeah, if you don't use QuickTime on a regular basis, get rid of that. I mean, it'll start up slower, but you know what? <laughs> It, it is better for it to start up a fraction of a second slower than for it to bog down your system resources right. every time you use your computer. Because a lot of these things, are, you know, for example, sometimes a program will go up and check to see if there's an update, a fresh copy, every time you boot up. Or it'll sit there in, you know, your taskbar and do that all the time. And, you know, you don't have to check for a new piece, a new copy of QuickTime every day, no. do you? So, uh, actually, one way to actually do, do this is, is, as you can see over here, it says there's a startup item, a command uh, column, and a location. And this is kind of the... You can go to the command first and see exactly what folder, for example, the program is running in. That's usually a clue to what it does. Right. It doesn't necessarily mean some spyware hides in legitimate places on the on Right. The so if, it's, if it is Norton, it'll say C, program file, semantic, blah, blah, blah. Right. And if it's Google, it, it might say that. C, Windows System 32. It, I mean, it could be legitimate. It may not be. Hard to say. So some things will be very obvious and some things not necessarily so. The next column, I think, is all important. And this is where we're going to go next. This is the location in the registry. I want to tell us a little bit about what the registry does on Windows. Oh, the registry is basically a, it, it is a place on your system where it keeps track of the values of all of these programs that are installed, what they do, and how they interact with right. each other. Right, little settings, right? And so basically, it's a big filing cabinet, and it says uh, this program should run in this mode with this kind of window and this kind of color and all kinds of things like that. But it's huge. So what we're going to do now to get rid of one of these guys is we're going to drill into our registry, and we're going to basically turn it off. So first of all, we've turned it off in, uh, in the startup uh, menu. And, that, and then we're going to basically go back to uh, our run button again, start, run. And this is really scary. Do you get scared when you want to do this? I always get scared when we're doing 
RegEdit. RegEdit. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's called Registry Editor, and it's basically a place you can go into this big filing cabinet we've been telling you about um, to play with settings. Now, if you're not experienced in doing this, even if you are experienced, it's a nasty place to go. And you can really wreck things badly if you delete the wrong thing. So let me just start up uh, reg reg edit here. And so I'm going to basically take, uh, I guess, let's have a look at tp4ex here. Dot ex. I don't well, exactly know what that, that is. That sounds dangerous. It does sound dangerous. It's probably it? completely safe, but it sounds like it could be dangerous. So let's pretend you've looked through this and you found this is a spyware uh, application that's running in the background here. And you want to get rid of it. Right. So I'm going to open my registry editor. And as you can see, the, it says it's HKLM, which is actually short for, there's a whole bunch of different um, areas in uh, the registry. HKLM is HKey Local Machine. So we're going to open that up. And then we're going to go back here and have a look. It's, it says go to the Software folder, the Microsoft folder, the Windows folder, the current version, and then Run. So that's what we're going to do. We're just going to basically going to drill down. So Software, then Microsoft, all the way down to Microsoft here. I can find it. And uh, what was the next one, Sean? You're going, oh, I forgot. Uh, Microsoft. That's one of the reasons why this, uh, this task is so daunting is because there's so many different uh, subsections in the registry, and a lot of them look the same, too. Right. So you want to be careful that you're deleting the right key and not one that just <laughs> looks the same. It's true. It's true. I mean, there you go. There's Windows, and there's also Windows NT. You want Windows. Mm -hmm. That's what it tells me to go. Windows current, current version. version. So that's what we're running right now. That's what we're running right now. And then in current version, run. So basically, you're drilling all the way down into your registry to figure out what item uh, this is. And we were looking for um, TP4X. And again, we have to go. So, so I've got into the run area. I'm going to go to the right hand side here. I'm going to go all the way down to look for TP4X. And I don't know what that is. Yeah. I think you better leave it. You think I better leave it? Yes. OK. <laughs> But if you wanted to get rid of this, in fact, here's what you do. You hit your delete key, and TP4X says, do you, are you sure you want to delete, delete this value? You say yes, bye-bye. That no longer is a problem. It will no longer launch from the registry. It will not, no longer launch in the startup, and you're going to get rid of that item permanently from your system. Now, here's the thing, is if that's supposed to be there, and it's a crucial part of what you're doing every day, then when that it goes to the registry and sees that it's not there, it can crash your entire system. Yeah, you can find yourself in enough. a deep, deep, deep... Uh, Deep doo doo, as yeah. it were. So this is why you want to go through each of those items and find out what they are before you delete them or don't delete them. Right. Now, one thing you can do if you do make that mistake, you can go and start. Um, let's go do this actually. Start, and I'm going to go into all programs. I'm going to go to accessories. This is a really great thing, and most people should know about this. Uh, I'm going to go into ooh, accessories and system tools. It's a, pro it's a program called System Restore, which basically allows you to take the system back the way it was before you made the mistake. And if you run that you can actually undo the problem. Which yeah, here, is really nice. Here's the other thing though, you have to set a point on that first. You have to have a point to restore back to. And most systems will actually set a restore point every morning. Not necessarily true for you, by default, generally happens. But if yours have been turned off by somebody, there's nothing to restore to. You're right, good point. You should probably set a restore point first before you do anything in the registry. Back up, back up, back up. I hate backing up. I hate it too, but you gotta do it. <laughs> have we, uh, I guess that's it. I think there's loads more to learn about this. It's a real pain in the bum. Um, but uh, it's an extremely useful thing to do uh, on your machine. It'll give you better boot times to get rid of spyware and things like that. Uh, oh, uh, producer is saying it's, uh, that's all the time we have for this week. Thanks for downloading. I'm Andy Walker. I'm Sean Carruthers. And we'll see you next time.